Hello again and welcome back to part 4 in the OrcadX layout tutorial series. My name is Adam Fuchs, I am a product engineer for Cadence Design Systems, and let's jump right into this video on part placement. We have quite a few topics to cover with regards to part placement, and there's several commands and options within those commands that we want to take a look at while we're doing our part placement. Let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we want to do is just to place all of our components so that we can easily access them within the design. To enter the part placement command, simply right click on where the move command normally is and you will see a radial menu appear and go ahead and select the place command. This helper window that pops up is just for some additional options for the place command. If you want to hide this window at any point, you can click the tab at the top that says place or you can use the X hotkey to toggle the place commands helper window at your mouse cursor. I like to keep mine at the top right. So to place multiple components, you can either type in a reference designator into this text field. For example, I can type in C32 and then it will hover over my cursor. I can also select components from my search window. So if I select my unplaced components in the design, and then highlight all of them either with a control A in the window or I can click scroll down and shift click to the bottom. You'll notice that all the components will then hover over my mouse cursor and I can place them in this case above my board outline. Now while these parts are placed I can still use the place command to then move other parts around. Like I said before I can type directly into here if I want to move D1, 2, and 3. I can say D1 through D3, and then those three components will hover on my mouse cursor. Likewise, if I want to maybe place them one at a time in series, I can switch to the series mode, select these components, and then I will place them one at a time in reference designator order D1, D2, D3. Likewise, I can also use a comma, say C28, C23, C15, C28, C23, C15, and then it'll place them again in reference designator order. One of the other ways that you can also use the placement command is to cross probe with your schematic. For example, if I go into my schematic and using my selection filter, I turn on just parts. Normally these are all selected. You can do that by selecting clear all and then select parts, hit OK. If I box select, for example, around this voltage regulator and all the capacitors that are related to this, and go back into OrcadX layout, you'll notice that these are all highlighted. And then depending on which mode I am, cluster or series, I can then click on one of them and it'll group them all together so I know that these are all part of the same essentially functional group. Now before we get started with the placement within the board, one thing that I want to do is just quickly change some visibility options. So on the left hand side here, we have the visibility pane. In here we can change all of the visibility colors and what we actually want to be turned on or off for all the different layers and objects in our design. Really quickly what I want to do is just assign some unique colors to the different copper layers as well as things like my silk screen and solder mask and then turn off some of the redundant geometries that I don't need. To quickly assign some unique colors to my copper layers, I can actually right click on this all and select rainbow down. This will assign unique colors to all of my copper layers. And this is especially useful when you're working with like a 16 layer design, for example, rather than having to select unique colors all the way through, you can select rainbow down and each color will be unique. For solder mask, I personally like to use a purplish color. And any color that I set with this uh, color picker will also be added to recents so I can easily reuse it. For my silk screen, I like to use yellow. And then for my paste mask, I will keep that as a gray color. Now for my DRCs, I like to keep this as a white color because that sticks out in my design when I'm looking at it. And finally, if I scroll down, here are some additional geometries and things that I can turn on and off. 
For example, notice that all of these are grouped under these dropdowns. If I want to turn off the visibility for everything in a group, just click the eye icon and that will turn everything off. In this case, because we're doing placement, I'm just going to go ahead and turn all of these off except for the component key pin because that will determine where we can actually place our components. If I look in this component section, I also want to change my assembly color to light blue. Now when we're doing placement, in this component section there's this quick view for top and bottom. While you have these turned on, notice that all of these components get this nice white text of their reference designator. So you don't have to rely on having, for example, text on your silkscreen layer or text on an assembly layer. Just turn on the quick view and you will have access to a very easy way to identify your parts by their reference designator. Finally, at the bottom here, there's also some options in manufacturing for turning on plated holes, bactrol holes, non-plated holes, and padless holes. We just go ahead and turn these on because we do have some through hole parts that we want to make sure we know where the holes are. And the rest of these, I'm just going to go ahead and turn off. Okay, at this point, we're ready to start placement. Now, we'll resume after I have set up Design for Assembly Rules. Design for Assembly Rules are very useful when you have certain restrictions on how close different types of components can be placed next to each other. Thanks again, and see you next video.